fishing really is what this club is all about. What you see here is the end product. James Stricker is up there throwing the bundles with his thrashing machine, but this process actually starts early in the spring. We get out here with these antique tractors and we plow 35, 40 acres and put them to get into oats. Later on in the summer, we come through with some antique equipment. We cut those oats and we bind them up and we shock them just like they did in the old days. We let them dry for a couple of months and then we have to get up there and put those things up in wagons. I remember David Dean telling me at the end of the day once when we were doing this, he looked at me and he said, you know, Norm, you wouldn't think that an eight-pound bundle of oats on the end of a fork could whip a man. But I'll tell you, after you've done that for eight hours out in a hot field, and when those loads get high in the wagon, you got to throw them up maybe 10, 12 feet to the man on the top. Those loads get awful heavy and we get awful tired. But this is what it's all about. This is what we're here for. We show how it was done in the good old days. When John Kern and I put together that show on the Thrasherry, we thought that was perhaps the most important scene that we'd filmed. Because after all, the Thrasherie did begin many years ago as a Thrasherman's reunion. So John and I thought it would be important to show the scenes behind the scenes at the Thrasherie. And that's the planting and the harvesting of the oats. So that's what we've done in this next presentation. Enjoy. It was a cold day in April when we started planting the oats, but as Wendell Bennett always said, when's the best time to plant oats? Anytime it's not raining. You'll see as this international harvester rounds the corner here and heads into the field that there's still quite a bit of frost in the ground. It wasn't a problem out here in the front field, but when we got to the back field, we were in the shade of the trees on the north fence line. The ground was frozen and some of these tractors came to an absolute stop. Every make of tractor makes its own distinctive sound, but if you've ever run a John Deere, you'll never forget the sound of the Poppin' Johnny. There are two cylinder clubs all over the United States that just sit there weekend after weekend to listen to the sound of those twin cylinders banging away. David Dean gets into the act here with his Minneapolis Moline. Note the steel wheels on that plow.
you might notice that this isn't any of this modern no-till farming. We do it the way they did it in the old days. We plow, we disc, then we rake, then we sow. If you grew up on a farm, I'm sure you'll remember how much fun it was picking up those rocks. Listen to the sound of that International Harvester coming on down the line. Next, listen to the unforgettable sound of that poppin' Johnny. little disking followed by a little raking and this field's almost ready to plant the oats. Todd Ligman, the club president, riding on that grain drill. Everybody participates in planting the oats. Wendell must have been right, because here it is, just about three weeks later, it's April 23rd, and we've got good germination on these oats coming out of the ground. Yes, they are easy to plant. Let's fast forward now to May 29th, and you can see what's happened with these oats. They're growing nicely. We've had good rains. There's a real reason here why there's a smiley face on the calendar that John put out here in the field. Yes, it does appear that we're going to have a good crop of oats in 1999. We'll fast forward another month, and it's now June 29th. Look at the golden color on those oats. There's nothing prettier than a golden oat field in the sun. These oats are getting ready to harvest. It's a good thing that Wendell remembers how to put this reaper together each summer or else we'd be in real big trouble when it came time to harvest those oats.
this one we always have to retighten after run it off. And we use this long eight inch stretch. That's good. Probably in the 1930s, I would imagine. Yeah. Fill it right up to the top when yeah. we start. Yeah. And that way we don't well, run out. We'd have to have a level to fill it because I see it's run out. Well, they're all for your shirt. That's just running out on the corner of it. Look at the grass. Ain't gonna, no, it ain't going to hurt the grass. Just don't roll your shirt in it right away. Wait, wait well, a little bit more before you leave and then get it do. You have more dirt than that on you than you're done. How was your last job? Yeah, at least, at least <laughs> wait for a little while. It's too early yet. Yeah, never know. Don't forget to put that crank in there. This morning at the gas station. Yeah, it seems to me last year we walked around looking for this crank for a while, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Somebody lost what are we going to use for a tractor on this? Anything that's handy and it'll run, I guess. Yeah, one that runs will go down the road. Down the road. M, M farm all work good. We got one of them ought to run, hadn't they? Should be two well, up and down there. I wouldn't bet on I wouldn't know. <laughs> uh, these are in my truck, but so the, sh so the shed's probably open there. down there now. Well, yeah, I, think, one. I don't I have any tractors up here so far. I don't have any tractors up there. Playing with the train. Yeah, okay. it's still okay. there. Well, otherwise, we could open the other end. Wendell has the shoulder in. Where's the twine at? Right. It's over in the pavilion. I got a new bale in the back of my truck there. We can use that, too. Oh, okay. I <coughs> had a ball down, out of that. Down here, I can get it at the same time. <laughs> get that 300 pounds off the other side, it comes right down. <laughs> well, you guys are pulling it down. I had my arm over the seat, and I couldn't go anywhere. About the time that they broke the thing. Well, he kept hollering at Don Lux to uh, not turn so short on the corners, and Don didn't listen, and he broke one of the boards on the paddle. Wendell was so mad he picked the piece up and threw it right at him. Called them bad names too. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Don's not here. <laughs> Learned a lesson from it, don't you? Need? <laughs> I, yeah, not to come back. <laughs> That's one pretty looking oat field out there, and it seems a shame to open it up now and start cutting these oats. But there's only one way to get these things harvested, and that's with the reaper. I just go the other way, throw it into the other, and then throw them out and go over. But we'll do 
Okay, let's whoop. So we're in gear. Better be in gear with. Okay, let her go. Show me how to how you guys how I uh, shock oats, and I hope this is the right way. This way I was taught. First, we make a teepee effect, and we do this, and, and we make uh, we do this. So we have six of them standing up like this. Then. We put one on the end like this, on the side, and one on the other side, and then we cap it, like so. It kind of spread it out. It acts like a rain cap to keep the rest of it dry. And you always want to run them north and south, so there's air can go through the center to dry them out. And that's how I was taught to make a shock. You can sit on top of them and it'll hold you up. That's how strong you can make a shock. That way it will stand the wind during the summer while it's sitting outside. What about Walt Burkheimer? Walt Burkheimer was shocking one day and he got it where he was sitting on it and riding it like a horse. I thought that was pretty good. Shock them when I dump them. Hey, wait a minute, Buzz. Oh, oh, oh. Back her up a little bit. We got a loose one back there. We'll... Yeah, I got a new Orville there. <laughs> Is that his tractor? That buzzes, yeah. Run that on through a little bit before I throw these in, Buzz. Go ahead a little bit. Okay. Now back her up a little bit. Yeah, it all used to make me tie them with straw. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Okay, that's good. Don't throw them in there yet. I want to <clears throat> tighten that apron. Get around here.
Ouch. The hard hat area. The hard head, I guess. See that? Eight foot platform binder. Canvas is pretty long and as it gets warm, oh, it yeah. stretches. And I have to tighten her up a little bit. Uh, could be a lot harder. That loose one. I guess he threw her back there. Okay. Guess we're ready. some of that out of there. Well, that's a fine one, Ed. didn't tell you that when he sold it to you, did he? It won't, won't start when it's hot. He just died told, in there? Told yeah. Buzz, it says, Orville didn't tell him that when he sold it to him. <laughs> yeah, to get the warm, you gotta leave it set for a while to cool it out. Wanted to take a break. <laughs> Just a General Motors guy, there. Eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't work down there, do you, Buzz? No. Good. <laughs> I don't know. We have to look. <coughs> In and down. All right. Do it right, please. <laughs> but I have to tell Orville, I'm a son of a bitch. We're going to have to go back to them M farm holes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're on the road again. Yeah, we got to get a new ball of twine in here. We got to pull the old ball out, or what's left of it, just so we don't run out of twine. I'm going to drop that down in there.
clean the garbage out first. Hey, back here. I gotta find the end here. Tie that on, huh? Where is it? Gotta be here somewhere. There it is. Now, <clears throat> tie that on there like that. Now, when that ball goes empty, it'll take right off on the new one. And what time is it anyway? 7.30. Is it? We'll be done by 12. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> there, you can have that. <laughs> okay. We're on the road again. Probably have to tighten them aprons again a little bit too. A little later on. But for this year, so now it's time to get the binder papers away and put away and <laughs> dig all the oaks off of it. Clean it up a little bit. Two dollars? This is buck and a half a pound, two dollars a pound. This operates the bundle carrier there. I always have a rope on there to help pull it back. It's hard on the foot. Of course, this is the reel. This lever here adjusts as soon as the head back, of course, so you can get the string in the middle of the bundle. <laughs> this lever here tilts the platform. Of course, you can see that. <coughs> ring up there when they had horses on it, so that's where the horse ring go through that ring and they wouldn't get caught in any of the end paper or the, or the gear. But we don't pull up your horses anymore, but we use horsepower, but on four wheels, not four legs. Crank it down so you can get the, get the apron straps. Well, there it works. Get that thing. Scrap. Yeah, I just want to get on the other side there. I've been a half before. Always pull all the straw and stuff out of them. When you put them away, that keeps mice out of them a little better. Than... Leave all that on there, then makes food for the mice. That's 
the upper elevator apron. Pull all that straw out between the slats. Can we roll them up and put them away? Okay, now we gotta crank the bull wheel up, get the trucks under it. This is the fun part. Let that man go. Woo! Don't break the crank though now. Oh! Let's see, crank the one percent. Yeah. Hey, I've got it. Haven't I won? There you go. Yeah. It's hard to find something much prettier than an oat field that's just been cut and the oats shocked and standing out there in the field. If you want to see a scene like this, usually you have to go out west to Janesville where there's still some Amish farmers that harvest their crops this way. But also, what you can do is just get on Highway 51 going north out of Janesville up towards Edgerton and come past Thrasherman's Park after the guys have cut these oats. You'll see a field just like this. Oftentimes on the day after we cut the oats and shocked them, I'd drive home and pick up my wife Carol and we'd return out to the park. We'd sit out there as the sun started to go down and I'd take a bottle of champagne out of the trunk. We'd pop the cork and we'd toast those oats. A few weeks have gone by now and those oats have been drying out there in the field. Last night a few people got together out here at the park and pulled out some of these steel wheeled wagons getting ready for today when a team of men is going to descend into this field and start loading up those oats so they'll be ready for thrashing come showtime. all that rain there. Bundles get real wet on the bottom, so we kind of have to tip them out, let that sun get on the bottom and dry them out a little bit. And we've had so much rain. As soon as he gets here with them forks, why, we'll get this show on the road here. Tip That's some the, of these out here or what? Yeah, we're going to tip them out a little bit because they're, <clears throat> they're pretty wet right on the bottom, yeah. And it's dry enough now, the dew is pretty well dry, so we can go ahead and get a lot of oats and maybe this year too. I called up there to see what was going on. I was here last week. It was a little warm. Charlie said that we didn't get a pretty soon the bees would have them all. Yeah, that's for sure. They don't bother here too much though, but that <clears throat> backfield there, they old geese, they have a harvest back there. Thank <laughs> you. 
nothing more to say. <laughs> we put in a long day and we're tired. And the last yeah. load comes in, boy, that's the one you're looking for all day long. Yep. Yeah. It's the end of the day and the wagons are put away in the shed, just waiting for showtime and the thrashing machines. Finally, it's showtime. And showtime means it's time to get out those wagons and start thrashing those oats. That's Harold Mowerman down there in the yellow hat. Harold's been a member of the club for many years, and you can always find him somewhere down there by those wonderful thrashing machines. Here's Jim Wheels of Steel Holman's rig. That's Jim standing out there on top of his thrashing machine. 
Let's just sit back now and watch some of these thrashing shots while this video takes us back to days of long ago. We'll mix a little bit of the old and the new here. That's a case steam tractor sitting there in the background, but here's a more modern New Holland baler sitting out here getting rid of the big stack of straw that always collects behind one of the thrashing machines. Here you see Cal Bader, Dave Stricker, and Wendell Bennett making hay bales. Harold Mowerman reminiscing once again. We can't hear the story he's telling down there, but we can listen to the wonderful sound of that Poppin' Johnny and watch once again this magnificent thrashing machine in operation. This thrashing machine is stopped now, and it'll be put away in the shed waiting for next year's show. But you can rest assured that this cycle is going to begin again next spring when the men from the Rock River Thrasherie get out and start plowing and planting those oats.
Thank you.